Okay, boys and girls, this is not for the weak of heart, but it's actually not a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's anyways, you'll have to go in and dig a lot of it up for yourself. The migrant caravan that headed to the southern border of the U.S. in April 2018 was covered by the media big time. According to the official reports, these people came mostly from Honduras, where the caravan had started, and then people from Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Mexico joined Eventually, the Eventually, you'll see the how it's the main related to the for them coronavirus. To their home country were gang violence and poverty. When I saw the first pictures, I was shocked. But then I realized there were just too many images of women and children, which is always a sign of media manipulation and a hidden political agenda. Always. Critical thinkers like the QAnon studied the pictures closely. Too many things did not add up. Like I said in part one, these people had to walk for 45 miles a day each and every day for one and a half months. But these people don't look exhausted. They're not dirty or sweaty. I mean, look at them. Their clothes are clean. Clean babies. Clean pants. They wear labels. They are well fed. These people aren't refugees. They're not poor. I traveled through Mexico, Guatemala and Honduras and I saw poverty. Believe me, these people are not poor. 45 miles a day on flip-flops? Are you kidding me? Or even barefoot? Come on, where are the blisters? And why aren't they carrying what is needed for a journey like that? Blankets, food, water. Where are the spare diapers? Some people do have small backpacks, but they appear to be brand new. So, what did happen? First of all, buses and vans were deployed to transport all of these people from Honduras to the US border. Flip-flops? No problem. You only have to get out of the van occasionally for a group photo. Next, in order to get as many people as possible, you pay them. Thanks to some alert anons, this was filmed on site. Then, in order to be efficient for the media, you give the main players a colored wristband. Brilliant! Different colors have different meanings, all known to the reporters and the cameramen. Some people overact. Others are really convincing and make it to the World News Report. Meet Maria Meza and her five children, all the way from Honduras. She made it to every news item on TV, telling about her terror the fear for her children, their eyes all wet and swollen due to the tear gas that the American Border Patrol so viciously threw at them. Well, Maria, there are a few flaws in your story. I've looked at every single picture of you and your beautiful girls. None of them show any signs of tear gas. This picture clearly shows that you are the only ones in action. The cameraman shoots away, completely unhindered by the gas. And there is no panic. Let's have a closer look at this picture. 
Cameramen are standing in the line of smoke, yet have no problem with that. Oh wait, somebody is throwing a gas canister. Is that a fellow refugee? Maria told the press that her son went back the next day to get the canister and show it to the reporters. Shame on you, America. I do hope Maria was paid handsomely. I really do. But her story sucks. The family was photographed on another day, getting out of a van for yet another day's work in front of the camera. And the tear gas canister? You can buy them at any theatre prop retailer. Or you can use the police training variety. They produce white smoke, but no harm is done. I guess Trump's statement was correct. No tear gas was used on the children. The entire mainstream media coverage of this event was biased and flawed. My advice to the producers, next time, pay more attention to the details, for the anons are on to you. Refugees who walk for thousands of miles do not walk like this. Or like this. They don't wear flip-flops. They don't have brand new pink buggies. They do not polish their nails. They don't wear iron shirts. Neither do they have perfect haircuts and makeup. We'll have to fast forward here. My buddy is here. We gotta go find my stolen shotgun. This is nothing new. It was just never dealt with until now. The thing is, when I talk about this in my presentations, people don't want to hear about it. They don't want to look at these pictures. Which I understand. I would rather look away as well. But that reminds me of the famous one-liner of the Germans right after World War II. After being confronted with a painful Fall question, cabal. how could you let the Nazi atrocities happen? Why didn't you do something?